Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Business Morning on Sunrise Daily. And yes, we do business right here. Starts from the global space. Oil prices rose on Thursday, supported by optimism that potential U.S. interest rate cuts will boost economic activity and fuel consumption. The concerns of a slower global demand curbed gains. Yes. Yesterday, we had those inflation numbers from the United States looking good, now below the target of 3%, 2.9% is what it came at. So we see oil prices obviously reacting to that possibility of a rate cut by September. $79.95 for Brent, 0.24% uh, gain. While for uh, WTI of the United States, we can see uh, the gap there reduced right a bit, uh, just a bit right there, 79 and 76. 0.3% gain is what we saw for the WTI, obviously driven by that positive sentiment around the CPI that uh, was out yesterday. So both benchmarks fell more than 1% on Wednesday after U.S. trade inventories rose unexpectedly and on easing worries. So of course, uh, investors are also still looking at Iran uh, yet to retaliate you know, on that killing of their leader. I wonder which way it will look, uh, leaving a bit of uncertainty around there. Now, for the second time, the second trading session, we see the Naira depreciating since the um, Dutch auction system was introduced by the Central Bank last week. So yesterday, again, we saw that the Naira depreciated. On Nafim, uh, of course, uh, it dropped by 3 Naira 95 Kobo, lost 3 Naira 95 Kobo there to close at 1,586 Naira 4 Kobo for nothing while for nothing it lost 12 naira 35 cobble to close at 1585 naira 89 cobble well uh the anticipate rates will trade around these levels so uh, maybe a bit higher or a bit lower uh, by the close of trade today so just a couple of days ago, the central bank did tell us that they're going to reintroduce the publishing of macroeconomic indices. We got excited about it. The regulator has now released the Purchasing Managers Index for July 2024. And this survey, they say, was conducted between July 15 and July 19 to gauge the direction of economic activities. Let's keep our eyes on the numbers right here. I must say, we are really glad. Kudos to CBN for these numbers. We've missed them, only waiting on, you know, private uh, institutions uh, like, I, I think, Stanbic was the most popular. But we should have a more holistic view right here. So we see... Uh, PMI for July, the, per, the services sector is the only one that is positive. You know, anything above 50 is positive, shows you that that sector is growing. So we saw the services sector up at 50.3%. Industry, however, is in the negative 48.3%. Agriculture also negative 49.7%. Now, um, the PMI generally, of course, is made up of, uh, the, that's the composite, is made up of out new orders, employment, and raw materials. And we see most of them in the negatives, just outputs that's positive. That means, you know, um, production coming out from the real sector, right? They're at 50.3. New orders reduced. Purchasing power is reducing, so I guess others will expectedly reduce. Employment down. Raw materials, however, is uh, on like on chain, 50.7. So this is the PMI for Nigeria from the Central Bank. Central Bank, thank you so much for this. We'll look forward to more numbers. I guess I should also say that we're expecting inflation number for the month of July also today. I think about noon or so. Before Business Incorporated, I believe we should have that. That's to be coming from the NBS, uh, but subsequently, I'm sure we'll have either expectations or so from the CBN. And then uh, also yesterday marks the beginning for customs, the Nigeria Customs Service. They started implementation of 0% import duty and VAT exemption on essential food items following President Bola Tinubu's approval. The policy effective today, July 15, and it's run up to December 31, aims to lower food prices in the country. The tax relief applies to basic food staples like maize, rice, wheat, millet, and it's supposed to benefit importers. Uh, importers must have milling capabilities and a very verifiable background integration program. So um, that's one of the efforts of this administration to reduce the price of food even though we do know that, you know, that's kind of short term. 
Well, still around the customs, the Controller General of the Nigerian Customs Service, Mr. Bashir Adeni, says that relevant stakeholders are working to propose a solution to the forex volatility, which is negatively impacting businesses in the country. Mr. Adeni was speaking at the Trade Facilitation and Revenue Generation Public Lecture organized by the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, and it was held in Lagos. It's a public lecture by the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria as they turn their attention to trade facilitation and revenue generation with a focus on the option for an import-dependent economy. Conversations here centered around the Nigeria Customs Service, the intervention before now, and the need for even more interventions. One, which is a recent one, is suspension of price verification system in line produced by the CBA Central Bank of Nigeria. Restoration of some critical raw materials in the list of 41 items in the receptor for forex. Although we will have lost some trick along the line, but we will still have to appreciate this because it was one of the efforts that we made. Are changing. The Controller General of Customs, Bashir Adewali, connects with some of the frustrations of the manufacturers. This year alone, in the first quarter, this rates rates changed 28 times. It was even more alarming in the second quarter, it changed 42 times. So sometimes you wake up in the morning with one rate before the close of business, it has changed. I've had engagement with the Governor of Central Bank, and he's also concerned that it is no longer sustainable for us to keep this kind of regime. If we bring all the stakeholders together, manufacturers, captains of industries, the banks, customs, we may be able to achieve a perfect handshake between the fiscal requirements and the, uh, what is happening in the uh, uh, monetary environments. Challenges. However, what some of the challenges are beyond the customs. The container load from Lagos going to Amuwa Dauphin, you pay the same value for a container load from Apapa to Ibadan. At every point, the Agbiru stopped and demanded for money. We appeal to government to help us look into this because it's a great embarrassment. It's added more cost to our production activities. Conversations and plans initiated here is expected to climax at the manufacturer's 2024 annual general meeting planned for October. We have our eyes on the manufacturing sector today. Um, I think the chief executive officers index is also out uh, we'll talk about that in the afternoon or later on here on the program but now let's uh, look at that import waiver which begins today interesting and we have joining us to discuss in our commodity segment now Dumi Biuluoli as uh, senior analyst with financial derivatives hi Dumi B. good, good morning, morning. second good morning. time this week yes happy to be here <laughs> <laughs> so so I mean the import waiver that the federal government talked about begins today yes uh, but we always talk about the lag you yeah. know when it comes to policy yeah. Uh, so uh, I wonder how long you think it will take before we start feeling the effects in the market. They said it's going to end by December 31st. Um, I would say this, this is not so much the case where you would have that kind of long lag effect between policy and implementation simply because um, this is exactly what it is. You're going to buy, <laughs> you're going to get your products at a very subsidized, at an, somewhat like a subsidized rate. Yeah, but you, know, you know the traders already have old stock. Yes, so, so that's where I was going to. So by the time, you know, they're selling that off, then we're going to definitely see that oh, prices might still remain high up until maybe because it's starting today. Um, so let's say for about a month and then we will now start seeing um, reduced prices. And besides, remember on Tuesday, we already started seeing that some pr some prices for some commodities were already declining just simply because we're seeing, you know, um, some in increase harvest. in supply. Mm -hmm. And remember that this um, um, import waiver is coinciding with the harvest season as well. So the the, um, the uh, uh, combined impact of that on the on the food food market will, might likely be very positive going forward. And then when you look at the impact of this on the broader headline inflation numbers, you see that we do expect, you know, inflation at, in subsequent months to somewhat taper, simply because, you know, base effects are also going to, you know, have an added uh, positive impact on the headline inflation rate. But to be very clear on how this would, you know, translate in the economy. So already we're seeing that, yes, 
prices are reducing. But then again, you have to consider the fact that are people really equipped now to, you know, with their income levels, are they equipped to purchase, you know, the commodities? So we do expect that at the, in the upcoming months, people will definitely plan. Mm. You know, it's not a situation where there's panic buying now, where you have to buy when but, prices but are completely But this doesn't look reduced. like it's going to be very good for the farmers because eventually when the market is flooded, yeah. then the farmers will be forced to reduce the price and uh, they also have to plan for the future. So, this yeah. is ending in December. I mean, if... So this is it. We, we tend not to look at a lot of situations like this in that regard because it's like, it, it, think of it at a time where it's like crunch time, right? Where everybody is coming together to ensure that there is some level of um, price stability, especially for food in the country. So farmers right now, they are already harvesting, they're selling, they will obviously sell, sell their products. This is one of the situations where we do expect marketers to leverage on volume of sales rather than um, the pricing in itself because when prices are reduced and you're able to sell at a large larger quantity, you should be able to somewhat net it off. And again, this is also coinciding to an extent with the fact that petrol prices, so their logistics costs, petrol prices and diesel prices are not exactly as exorbitant as some months back. Um, so we do expect that that would a, a little bit reduce the, expert, the operating expenses on distribution and logistics as well. So the combined impact of all of this over the next Couple, couple of, of four, months. A couple of months will be somewhat positive. I wonder what will happen after December, though. Um, again, this, obviously, these are policies that have to be reviewed to see the impact, and this is where one of the one of the conversations about implementation and execution comes to place. So when we when we you know enact policies like this and we obviously see how the markets are receptive towards it and we see how impactful it is in this kind of economic economic, economic times that we're in where you know we need to ensure that there's somewhat some there's somewhat like food security and social tensions are not high you know so this is something that we do expect should be sustained at least up until when the yeah. um the reforms start phasing out a bit yeah i hope we would uh, have uh, at the background while we're enjoying this yes we're having a longer term Term, yes, for instance, dealing with the issue of insecurity yes, so definitely. the farmers can get back and you know definitely. and all of that. So by the time this is waning off, then we have the supply from there. But today is inflation day. Yes. What's the FDC saying? I mean, um, we do expect that inflation would still, you know, somewhat increase, but the rate of increase will be lower. And this is because um, of what, what exactly happened in the month of July compared to what is happening um, right now. So in the month of July, we saw an increase in, we saw the Naira depreciate a bit more, and that obviously would have an impact on importation costs and then um, prices. We also still saw a lot of commodities prices increase um, significantly. In July, the prices of tomatoes were really high. Pepper was really high. Onions was really high. Rice as well. And we do expect that to have an impact on the inflation numbers. And um, what is extremely important to note is when the NBS goes out to actually collect, collect the data and analyze, they actually do this within the first two weeks of the month, of the, uh, um, yes, of the period. So meaning that this survey, the numbers we're going to see are actually what happened at the, at, within the first two weeks or first three of weeks July. of July. And within those periods, that's when we saw all of these things happen. Uh, well, I think, I think that we can, we can um, expect good numbers by the end of yes. August because of we're beginning of August on, on good notes. On good notes, We have yes. the harvest, we have the tomatoes yes. and pepper. Yes, now definitely. we have the import waiver coming yes. into that. So yes, uh, definitely. a bit of stability. Yeah. And the protests and all of that definitely definitely so but one thing to just note is the rate of increase in inflation rate so while the number might look very might look higher um we also consider on the on another layer of analysis the rate of increase in inflation and when you look at what has been happening from the beginning of, of the year up until june you see that the rate of increase in inflation rate has actually slowed down so we're coming from a period where inflation the rate of increase in inflation as of february and march was around 1.5 percentage point and as of june June, even when inflation actually increased to 34.19%, we saw the rate of increase significantly decline to 0.2%. So we do expect that the rate of increase would, would decline again, um, but the number will just be a little bit higher than yeah, what Yeah, but I mean, we look forward July. to when we do like US yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> They're yes. even below the target now. Their target is 3%, or no, they did 2.9%. Yes. Unlike the UK, though, UK had a little bit of increase. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I mean, I think this puts us for the US on the path to uh, rate, rate cuts, cuts yes. which we are 
far hoping from. for. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely. It's just when you look at the entire the temperature of the global inflation and interest rate environment, you do see the same pattern coming up from the U.S. spread, from the Bank of England, from the European Central Bank, even the Bank of Canada as well. You see that almost everyone right now is you know easing their their their, their tightening measures because. It, it, Price pressures are already, you know, abating. Um, for Nigeria, the situation but is not yet. But we did ease, case. anyways. We did just fifty. I mean, fifty basis points point. increase. Is increase. That compared so to what is, we've done before now. Yeah, definitely. But one thing, I think I mentioned this on, on Tuesday. Um, one thing we need to s understand is how the um, central bank monitors inflation and what and how that drives the decision that they make. So they are not only looking at the headline inflation number. Most central banks look at the underlying inflation rate. That's the core inflation rate. And when you look at the core inflation rate in Nigeria for the, over the past month, you see that that has steadily increased, even faster than the rate of increase in the headline inflation rate. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the underlying things that are causing inflation to rise in Nigeria are still very prominent. So things like the exchange rate volatility, things like um, low agricultural sector productivity. And that now brings me to the point where you already mentioned before that, you know, aside from these short-term measures, we need to have long-term measures in place. But again, the, with the levers that the monetary policy uh, uh, authorities can pull, they basically just have interest rates and their, their other monetary policy Yeah, tools. we look the way of fiscal, right? Yeah. Yes, not right now. That's the, yeah. that's the way to look. All right, Dumebi, thank you so much uh, for your analysis. This thank morning. you so Enjoy much for having me. You too. You too. All right, now let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk to manufacturers. You did see some of the issues. Uh, Dumebi mentioned the FX issue, FX volatility and all of that. We'll delve into that after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Watching Business Morning on Sunrise Daily. We delve into the manufacturing sector now and uh, see some of those issues, which you're very familiar with. We saw some of them in that report that was played earlier. And we have joining us for this conversation now, Dr. Emmanuel Hiakwazi is a managing director and chief executive officer of Nes Nesit Nigeria Limited. Uh, Dr. Hiakwazi, good morning and thank you so much for your time. So talking as a manufacturer now, um, we're just talking about the import waiver that comes into implementation today in Nigeria for staple food. Uh, we know that the manufacturers have been talking yesterday, the customs uh, controller was with manufacturers here in Lagos. I talked about issues around, especially the FX volatility, uh, the issue of logistics. Perhaps you want to emphasize on some of these issues. Of course, I will when we come to my own aspect. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go to your own aspect. Okay. Uh, wonderful to be in your midst this morning. Uh, my name's, uh, I think I should remove that doctor at this point because <laughs> there is crisis in the line. Okay. And uh, there is also hunger. Uh, I don't think we deserve title as of today. But I believe that when the economy gets up to our expectation, then we can take back our titles. But let's work together to make Nigeria great again. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Ihagwazi, the Managing Director of uh, Nesit Nigerian Limited, as quoted. And by God's grace, we are indigenous uh, manufacturers in Nigeria, a member of uh, MAN, also a member of Lubricant Association of Nigeria. And we are working hard with government to ensure that we put food on the table of the masses. And it has been a great time. But um, as I too, as I am trying to, you know, open up with you, there are quite challenges in industries today. There are. What are those challenges, the most pressing ones? Actually, the most pressing one is the issues we are having in the banks. Quite challenging. Uh, I think um, we came into business uh, when the government introduced the ease of doing business. And instead of going to abroad to look for investors, we say, why can't we be the investors since we, we have the same brain? that uh, the white people has and the Chinese and other people, we have the same brain and we have the same talent. 
And when the government introduced that ease of doing business, and then we follow it. It is aimed to make sure that we industrialize our country, and it's also aimed to increase the GDP of this country, and then for us to be great like the Asian and the European and uh, Americans. So we embrace it. And indeed, in those days, the bank are indeed business enablers. Because I could remember vividly that uh, Bank of Industries, uh, when we started, they lend us money. And we finished, we paid them. It was fantastic. In fact, that is the starting point. And later, the banks also, at that time, they were keeping to their word. But I don't know what happened. What do you mean they're, they're not keeping to their word? They're not giving funds or the funds are too expensive? No, 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 no. They're not keeping to their word. Let me tell you what happened now. Why I say they're not keeping to their words. Um, <clears throat> uh, we manufacture lubricant in Nigeria. And all the, about the mobility you are talking about, without lubricant, you can't move your vehicles. You can't get all those uh, uh, logistics in place. So <clears throat> that is what we did. And the raw material we use in producing those uh, products, we source uh, at least 40 percent in Nigeria, fantastically well. We are praying that in the, in the near future we can have them 100 percent. But by now, as of today, that we have not gone to that level, we source the 60 percent from abroad. We import from America, Europe, and then also Russians and other countries. So as a result of that, we have to open our LCs from banks. So we started from opening the LCs from bank. I could remember uh, we have to secure about a loan of 2 billion Naira from um, one of the banks. And that is about $5 million in those days. And uh, we, the little we are having ourselves, we keep on trading. But in, for you to open the LOC, you can't go direct to CBN. You have to pass through bank. So the bank will come to my office. I have not gone to any bank. They come to our office because when they saw the factory, you know, they are happy with it. They come to office, they told us they have dollars. And then we say, okay, open the lines for us. And they do. Then after importing 2001, 2002, and 2003, uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> Down to the end of 2003, there is a rumor that Naira will be devalued. And the bank, one of the bank wrote me and said that um, those effects that we have, um, we have paid for, we provided 100% um, cash back. In fact, they told us we are going to pro provide 130% uh, cash back. 130% instead of 100%. And I asked my FC, the financial controller, and the financial controller told me that, look, <clears throat> the 30% is for them to be able to take their charges and also the duration of them getting the money from the CBN, that that 30% covers that. So we, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't insinuate any things on the way. So we quickly opened those LOCs. So, so, so because we don't have a lot of time, mm. the issue now... We, is after opening those LOC, the bank came after the devaluation of money and said that we should bring 400% addition. So are you saying the challenge now is access to FX? Is that what no, you're talking about? No, not access to FX. Then what? The, it is part of it, per se, but the bank is asking us that the previous LOC we opened with them, which we gave them money, for it and those goods has been sold and they're asking us that we should bring more money for that previous ones and i said bank where, where, where are we going to get those money so that is the issue all right you said 2021 is this a recent thing not recent things <laughs> they say that those loc they open for us 2021 that they as bank has not gotten the effects from the cbn to liquidate their own line but that is business between the bank and CBN, not to the customers. Because we provided 130% some bank, 120%. If I had that money, <clears throat> if I have bank by myself, I should only use 100%. And those goods have been sold, and it's no longer. So these are the issues that the bank is having between the bank and the central bank. So instead of them to push it to the central bank, which 
is their mother banks or per se you know how to put it they are regulators, yeah, they are regulators. they are now since the they felt that the bank is the cbn is stronger than them they have to push it to the manufacturers in turn killing all the manufacturers because how where do you get such money so what's the way forward now that means you have not even started accessing you know the recent uh, system which the central bank has introduced the banks have been accessing the dutch system you know to get fx that's not trailing down to you you are talking of a transaction you had in 2021 before for that is the true issues we have not started accessing now we are only getting money from um in fact for the past uh, six months i don't think we have not imported anything we have not imported it is so tough it is have, so you, have you approached the banks because they've been having supply from the central bank you see those things you cannot understand them very well because that is what they're telling us that the central bank is giving them fx if central bank is giving them fx why can bank comes up to tell me that the transaction 2021 has not been liquidated having provided the cash 130 percent the 12022 has not been liquidated, having provided the cash 100%, and the 12023 has not been liquidated. And you calculated all of them and multiply it with the new devaluation of dollar. And the bank is asking me, in those days, they came to the factory, they say this factory weighs 3.5 billion. And in, in accumulation, the bank is asking me that I should bring about 45 billion naira to come and settle FX. And it looks like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's like the murderers. <laughs> so what's the way forward now? The way forward is that we are appealing to the government to uh, look at the ease of doing business that they have introduced. It is following that ease of doing business. Today, we have employed direct and indirect about 2,000 workers working with us. And that is what brought us to this level. But because of these challenges that I told you now, if care is not taken, those 2,500 people will put off the streets. And then, the, the, you know what the implication in this kind of country where we are. So we are praying to the government to look into the industries, especially the manufacturers. We are partners with the government to make sure that the, the real ease of doing business, which they told us, that they should implement it. The number one, just like you have said about the tariff in um, in imports, because if the tariff is low, we can be able to export to the neighboring countries. Then number two, it is this issue of banks. If the government was to devalue dollars, the devalue naira as they, as we claimed, they would have liquidate all the transaction that the bank has with them before that time, before they can devalue. For me, I'm not owing any bank. All the, because I provided 130%, so 120%. All right. And, and uh, the only thing I know uh, is that uh, this is our country and we are going to labor together to get out of all this. Yeah, place. we certainly have to deal with uh, issues, you know, and find a solution. Dr. Emmanuel Ihiakwazi, the managing director. It's, I shouldn't call you doctor because it's a crisis period. Yes, yes, managing yes, yes, director, yes, yes. chief executive officer of Nest at Nigeria Limited. Was that we try to reach out to, you know, some regulators or banks, you know, on this issue and um, find out what really, what really is going on? Because, I mean, we need manufacturers for us to grow our real sector. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, well, a worrying scenario there, yes. Uh, transactions of since 2021 now um, being asked to pay for it. Uh, but now um, it, we have just a couple of seconds, so we'll just tell you that the market yesterday closed again in the red. The NGX was down 0.2%, uh, lost about 8 billion naira, the close of trade. And uh, we see mostly red, 0.5%. Uh, close mostly red, but we'll give you fresh numbers. We'll give you fresh numbers at 1 p.m. That's Business Incorporated. I'll be here on my own, unfortunately, but do join me when I have your coffee. I'll be fine. Let's head back to the Sunrise Daily Studio.